What you're looking at is a picture on my screensaver. It's a, it's a picture of a, um, a, uh, a ship that uh, was uh, supporting in World War I, uh, moving the troops uh, over there in Europe. <clears throat> this particular ship uh, carried American uh, servicemen and uh, allies. Um, kind of an older picture that I have acquired over the years. I uh, actually found it on eBay. <clears throat> um, anyway, you may ask, uh, you know, what's the big deal about the ship? Those funny uh, markings on it were, uh, I've seen different uh, varieties of this uh, ship, and uh, they would put those on there to kind of, believe it or not, uh, to uh, distort it, camouflage it in the, in the ocean uh, with those distortions, maybe um, would uh, camouflage it a little bit uh, and uh, help with uh, it uh, not being s shot uh, by a torpedo. And in this particular case, this particular ship was, uh, it was torpedoed on um, February 5th uh, in 1918 and it sunk it went right down to the bottom near the end of Isle. Um there were some survivors um luckily that there was a lot of men killed um sad to hear the reports that uh, some of these men washed up on shore some of them even had no um dog tags for some really reason and uh, were ident unidentifiable um the survivors, uh, two, some not having dog tags, were uh, picked up out of the water and taken to uh, France. And uh, I believe it was commissioned by the government. This is my theory. I don't know for sure. Uh, that Because they didn't have any dog tags. The dog tags would be made. In uh, World War One, a dog tag was not elongated like we're used to seeing a uh, kind of a um, uh, metal elongated tag now, uh, but they were round and they were uh, exactly this dimension. Uh, the dimension um, is right at an inch and a sixteenth. Uh, you can see that the coin um, or the the the, the uh, dog tag made was of a coin and happens to be a French coin uh, I think it's a two franc maybe a five franc I, I can't remember it's been a long time since I took it to the coin shop but it uh, it's made out of silver it was minted uh, from 2000 excuse me, uh, 1918 to 1921, maybe. So, uh, it is uh, of the same era, and the story obviously can't be proved, but here we go, there's, there's a coin uh, um, with all this information on. Uh, the name at the top is E-H-Edgeworth, E-H Edgeworth, uh, my history uh, has found that it's uh, his name was Edward H. Uh, Edward Hubert Edgeworth, and uh, the ship he was on was the Tuscania. There's a star right there, set of wings, uh, breastplate. His number was twenty four nine nine six three A dash E dash F American Expeditionary Forces. Um, France, 1918. Uh, not sure if this is a dog tag or not. I think it is probably a, maybe a memento. I, I don't really know for sure. But uh, one thing I do know for sure is that uh, I found it metal detecting in a little town below uh, a little town called the Michigan Bluff, California. Um, the ship <clears throat> did, in fact, uh, have... Uh, um, uh, notoriety and a lot of uh, history was written uh, with the survivors and stuff uh, in the United States uh, there was a lot of history 
and E.H. Edgeworth was one of the survivors. <clears throat> this particular coin uh, was found by me using a metal detector. I was out uh, uh, snooping around up in the hills and happened to find this along a little road called Michigan, uh, excuse me, uh, Mosquito Ridge. I'm not going to tell you the exact uh, location because uh, I, I may save that for uh, um, a uh, identifying purposes uh, for uh, maybe somebody that knows this gentleman. Uh, but anyway, um, as the story goes, I found it metal detecting. I tried to find uh, this particular family. I found out that they were from uh, prior to him going to uh, uh, the war, into the war. He was from a little town called Sebastopol in Sonoma County. But Sebastopol is just west, excuse me, just east of um, uh, Bodega Bay, which is uh, then the Pacific Ocean. Uh, right on the uh, Pacific Ocean, north of San Francisco, uh, west of Sacramento, which I am from. The uh, gentleman did come back, and it was written in different articles with three of his buddies as a survivor. Um, located in Petaluma, there's some notes of him being in Petaluma, and then also in Nevada City. Other than that, I've never been able to find out anything about this gentleman at all, or offsprings. He did have, uh, I think, about nine to ten brothers and sisters. His dad, I believe, was a mayor of uh, Sebastopol, California. But I just, I just ran into a brick wall. I thought I'd try um, YouTube, since a lot of people um, may uh, try uh, YouTube to find certain things. I happened to just moments ago type in HMS Tuscany and actually found a couple of videos. I thought, wow. What a great idea. I would love to find the, this uh, a better home than uh, throw it in a box that I have in the closet. Uh, it deserves something better than that. And uh, I'd love to share that with maybe a great-grandson or maybe a great-nephew uh, or niece of um, um, Edward uh, Edgeworth. And uh, would love to do so. Uh, you can contact me uh, at uh, Bob at askaroofer.com uh, I am a roofing uh, a consultant and uh, I open that email quite a bit during the daytime and again that's uh, bob at askaroofer.com love to uh, talk to you and uh, find a better home for this thing it's a neat coin um, I feel lucky to have found it and uh, uh, been its uh, guardian for uh, shoot <laughs> quite a few years now and I um, feel uh, an honor to be able to share this story about a, a ship that went down uh, off of the uh, shores of Tus, uh, the shores of uh, Islay where uh, several um, uh, English and allies uh, of America were uh, killed by a torpedo uh, torpedo uh, shot from a German sub. Interestingly enough, the um, stories that I've been reading over the years, uh, they had a survivor, a club, these men that did survive, and uh, they vowed to, to have the last man uh, toast them, uh, the last survivor. And as these gentlemen got older and older and older, approaching maybe 100 years old, um, the, this uh, happened uh, a few years ago. Uh, where the last one finally uh, finally did die, but uh, went to a gravesite over there in uh, I think it's Ireland, then uh, toasted all of his his uh, fallen brothers uh, in a last toast, probably maybe some Irish whiskey or something. I'd like to think of maybe a mug of Irish beer, who knows what? But it's kind of a neat story. Uh, you don't hear. Uh, I had never heard of it before, but uh, now that I'm uh, shared in uh, this history, I like sharing the history with, with uh, your folks. Hopefully we can find this uh, gentleman's offspring. Good luck. Enjoy talking to you. 
I hope to hear from somebody in the near future. Bye-bye.